Good morning. I'm so glad you have uh, you're able to join us this morning. Uh, I I like to know that I do this on Friday, but I I, I like to to think of you and, and that are going to be watching this on Sunday, and and I I like to believe that there's that there's a connection here. The the connection is by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what connects us. That's what Christian fellowship is. We have this, what we have in common is the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ is able to, to penetrate and to transcend uh, anything and everything, including distance. Um, so I know that, that, that some of you are not from around here. I know that some of you just are, are not yet able to come out. And so, so you're watching this this way. And I I want you to, to, to know that, that I believe there's a connection with us, and I thank God for that. So um, I'm going to talk, you know, in, during my sermon about uh, one of the things I'm mentioning is St. Patrick's breastplate prayer. And I want to read you just the, the very, the first couple of paragraphs of that prayer. Um, it's rather long, but I'm just going to read a, a part of it. It says, I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through the belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. I arise today through the strength of Christ's birth with his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion with his burial, through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension through the strength of his descent for the judgment of doom. I arise today. We arise today through the strength, the life, the, the being of God. All of this, we are connected to all of it. We are not separate from it. And that's what that prayer really draws out for me. Let's enjoy singing some songs together. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing Alleluia! Christ is risen! Before him, for 
for he is Lord of all. Sing alleluia, Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. You know, when you when you're single, everybody's kind of trying to set you up, right? And kind of the older you get, the more they are trying to do that. Oh, they got this, the perfect girl for you or the perfect guy for you. And, uh, you know, uh, I can just imagine those conversations, you know, where, you know, oh, you know, oh, I got just the, the, a guy that is just perfect for you. And like, you know, so maybe the girl gets a little bit, you know, a little bit interested and it's like, well, you know, um, what, what's he like? Um, you know, is he nice looking? Well, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you know what that means. Right. But, uh, then it's like, well, okay. Okay. Maybe he's not the, the nicest looking, but, uh, is he fun? And it's like, no, no, he's not fun. Okay, well, well, is he funny? No, he's not funny. Um, is he sweet? It's like, well, yeah, okay, I guess, I guess you could say he's sweet. Um, well, well, tell me, tell me more about him. Well, you know, he's, he's kind of demanding. He kind of expects a lot. Um, He's real serious. Like I said, he's, he's not fun. He's not funny. Um, you know, based on that partial description, how interested are you? Are, do, 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 what girl is going to say, well, man, I can't wait to meet this guy. Okay. This is not a dating service, right? I'm, I'm here to talk about our spiritual disciplines, which really is about our drawing close to God. And sometimes I feel like we, we think of God like, like, is he, is he fun? Oh, no, he's not fun at all. Is he funny? No, he's not funny. Well, tell me, well, he's real demanding. You know, um, he expects a lot. And in, in the way we would describe God, he, it just sounds like, well, why would I want to be close to him? You know, um, Randy Harris uh, in, 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 a, in a book was, wrote this. He said, and he's quoting his mother. He said his mother used to say this. When people ask us, meaning Christians, how to become a Christian, we know exactly what to tell them to do. On the other hand, when they ask us how, to, how we draw closer to God, we don't quite know what to tell them. So we give them the big two, read your Bible and pray. And somehow it comes off a bit hollow. You know, I, I think Randy's mother was right. It, it, it does sound kind of hollow. It, it's like you're trying to talk me into doing something that doesn't sound any fun. It doesn't sound enjoyable. And the person that I'm going to be Drawing closer to doesn't sound like somebody I want to be that close to. But really, so much of, of when it comes to spiritual disciplines is, well, you should. Maybe we would use that word or maybe we would think that word for ourselves. I know I should. We all would sort of feel like, well, I know I should pray more. I know I should read my Bible more. And there's that word should. And it, it just seems like such a chore. And yet we see Jesus, Jesus didn't see it that way. Jesus had this strong connection with his father, but, but I don't think it was 
out of sort of out of duty that he would kind of wake up in the morning is like, well, I don't feel like getting up, but I know I should. Okay. So we read this in Mark chapter one, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby village so I can preach there also. That is why I've come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. You know, if you, if you look at the rest of the, the rest of this chapter, and, and because it, it describes a day, and that day is, is very busy. Um, Jesus did not have spiritual disciplines because he lived a life of leisure. Not at all. It was his spiritual disciplines were not part of his leisure. They, he was a busy man. He worked hard. He had lots to do. He was a people helper. And anybody that's in the people helping position knows that it can be very draining. And sometimes it can be very draining when you, you sort of feel like I haven't really done anything but you've been around people and you're helping them. And they're kind of all, each one of them is taking a little piece of you. And you know, that's the way it was with Jesus. But you know, this is in what we read in Mark chapter one is in no way unusual for Jesus. Jesus, this is, this is common for Jesus to do this. Luke chapter five writes this, Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. It, it became a habit of him. And like I, like I told you, these people, crowds are coming to him and that he is healing them of their sicknesses. And there's no doubt Jesus loved to do this. And it was, it was a big part of his mission here on earth to heal pe heal what was ailing people, their sicknesses and, and their diseases and casting out demons. But I'm telling you, it, it, it wearies him. And so he would withdraw to lonely places and pray to be, to re, be refilled. Luke chapter six says, one of those days, Jesus went up on a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them whom he also designated apostles. I believe the, the, one, the one of the main reasons Jesus stayed up all night praying to God was because he knew that his choosing of the 12 mattered and he wanted to get the right ones. They were not the only choices he had. There were others, but he chose these 12. And uh, so he prays to his father all night about that. And I don't believe that when, when Jesus would stay up all night praying, that it meant he was talking. Like, you know, I don't know, when would he start? Let's just say he starts at 10 o'clock at night. And so he starts talking to God. And then at five o'clock in the morning, I guess we would say, he would stop. So for seven hours, he talks. I don't think so. I think at least some of that time was him in a prayerful state of mind, just being in the presence of his father and just enjoying the presence of God. In Matthew chapter 14, John has been beheaded. John is his cousin. And I, there's no doubt that it upset Jesus. Okay. But, but, but listen to all this. When, when Jesus finds out that John has been beheaded, he tries to withdraw to a solitary place. As we saw out of the book of Luke, that, that this, is, this was his custom, that when he, when he was upset or, or particularly weary or just felt like, I, I need a break, he would withdraw to a solitary place and pray. But that's what he is trying to do. But if you, if you look in Matthew chapter 14, the crowds followed him. And so out of compassion for the crowds, he healed the sick, okay? Uh, and then that, it, that would take him the day. And then that evening, 
This is when the apostles said, Jesus, you need to send the crowds away. But this is when Jesus says, well, you know, you need to give them something to eat. And he ends up feeding the 5,000. This is on this day, the day that he finds out John has been beheaded. And so then we also notice that he sent the disciples away after he had fed the 5,000. And that's going to take a while, right? These people are sitting around eating and talking, enjoying fellowship with each other. Um, so he, he sends the disciples to, you know, go, y'all go ahead. And they're crossing the lake in a boat, right? And he dismisses the crowd. And it says that after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And this is also the, the, the story where Jesus walks on the water. So the disciples go ahead in the boat. Jesus stays back, dismisses the crowd. Then he goes up on the mountain and he spends time in prayer. And then he walks across the lake to join his disciples. It's, what a day. This is, this is what I'm trying to say. The disciplines of Jesus did not flow out of a life of leisure. They flowed out of a life of intense ministry. You know, and looking at Matthew chapter 14, you can see Jesus looking for a chance to spend time with God. And, and he didn't find it till at night. All day long, he was wanting to withdraw and spend time with God, but he just, he just couldn't. You know, it, it tells me one thing, that, that for Jesus, his spiritual disciplines absolutely were a priority, but they were not his only priority. He had many, many other priorities. So I, what I really want to talk about today, and I, I, I so badly want to talk about this in a realistic way, in a way that might capture you, okay? So, so from now on, I'm going to talk about different spiritual disciplines. And I really hope and pray that something will grab you, okay? I, I'm, I'm going to talk about a bunch of different things, but I'm really hoping that something will grab you. You know, the presence of God practicing the presence of God, being able to be in the presence of God is a beautiful thing. So we can go back to what I was talking about at the beginning. Well, is God fun? Is God, I mean, I don't know if fun is the right word, but he's pleasant. It is, it is such a beautiful thing to be in his presence. It's you, you, the beauty of God is just incredible and it kind of wells up inside of you. And so the, the, the disciplines that I'm trying to give you are not disciplines so that you can feel less shameful or less guilty. That, that's not it at all. I want you to experience the beauty that is God. And as you step into these, you start seeing him differently. And I would hope that you would stop using the word I should and instead maybe use the word I get to. Because you can think of Jesus on, that, on the day that he found out that John had been beheaded. It wasn't, oh, I should spend time with God. No, it's I need to really was the word he was using. I need to spend time with God. But it just, it just couldn't happen until nighttime. But it, in the night, he got to. And I think when he finally hit his knees, he, it's like, oh, God, I have been needing to talk to you all day. I have needed to be in your presence. I, I, just, I just need to talk to you. You know, it, it, it's interesting because a, a woman at the gym just today, she, she's actually in my discipleship group on Tuesday nights. And uh, she was unable to meet Tuesday night, but she was telling me the reason was because her youngest son and his new wife, who, who live in West Virginia while he's going to school, called her and her husband and just needed to talk. They just, you know, they, they're living in West Virginia. They're, they're newly married. You know, there's lots of challenges coming at them, and they just needed to talk to their mom and dad. Isn't that, isn't that a beautiful thing? And if you've got, you know, adult kids, you know how precious that is when, when they just need to, to be with you. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And, and this, is, this is true with God. So uh, 
I, I want to, I, I think this being in the presence of God is what the psalmist was talking about when he said this, be still and know that I am God. Just, just be still. I, I don't know what your, what your day is like, but are you still very much? Um, a lot of people just are never still. And, and this is just like, hey, 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 stop for a minute. Just be still and know that I'm God. Uh, another psalmist writes this, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. This is what I'm talking about. Listen to this too, where Habakkuk talks about uh, false gods and then, and then the, the real God. What value is an idol carved by a craftsman or an image that teaches lies for the one who makes it trusts in his own creation. He makes idols that cannot speak. Woe to him who says to wood, come to life or to lifeless stone, wake up. Can it give guidance? It is covered with gold and silver. There's no breath in it. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Those are beautiful words, but that's what we're talking about here, about, about practicing the, the presence of God. So, so I just, you know, I, I want you to be thinking about this. That what are you doing to notice the presence of God? It's very easy to go through life week after week, month after month, even year after year, and you really haven't even noticed the presence of God. And I can say to you, what are you doing to practice the presence of God? And you're going to look at me like, what are you talking about? I go to church. What, what more do you want? You know, I say a prayer before I eat. What, 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 what do you want? And, and then this, we, we, that, that sounds like we're going to get back into this, but you should. And I'm, not, I'm really not trying to do that. I, I'm trying to say you get to. This is, this is what, what people are talking about. So, you know, I just, I, I think prayer, let's talk about prayer, Okay. Um, prayer is, is one thing that we all, that, that can be a chore. And, and you know, I've shared with you many times the ruts that I can get into with prayer. Um, where I just sort of feel like I just pray about the same thing all the time. Kind of like I, I, I say the same words, you know, over and over day after day. And, uh, recently, and you, you can look this up on, online, um, St. Patrick's Breastplate Prayer. Just for the last few weeks, this has seemingly been meaningful to me. There's parts of it I, I had used in the past, but now I, I found that there's a lot more of that, that same prayer. And it's different. It's very different. And you may or may not like it. It may or may not do anything for you. But here's the thing that that like, like a prayer like this does for me. It gets me out of my rut and, and it, it changes prayer where I can talk to God. I never even thought to talk to God about some of these things. Uh, look that one up and you can even look it up on YouTube and um, you can find places where uh, it's kind of set to music, kind of background music and, and somebody reads St. Patrick's Breastplate Prayer, the, the whole prayer. Um, look for on YouTube for ones that are about four or five minutes long. Um, there's also breath prayer. Uh, again, I'm just, I'm just trying to get out of my rut and, and I'm, I'm trying to have prayer where I, I'm not so much thinking of this chore that I'm doing. I, I, I'm just enjoying the presence of God. In breath prayer, you, you probably remember is like you, 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 you say, one phrase while you're breathing in and another phrase while you're breathing out. And it's a, it's a rhythmic thing, but you're connecting your, your prayers to God, to your breathing, which I think is a very, very uh, wise thing to do. Uh, the, the, the very traditional breath prayer is this, Jesus, son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I, I, I I'm giving you this not just for you to say, well, that's interesting, but I want you to, maybe one of these will grab you. That's what I'm hoping. You can, there's a long list though of things, how you can use breath prayer. One of them, and I, I did this recently, is on earth 
as it is in heaven. On earth, as it is in heaven. On earth, as it is in heaven. You, you can do that for two minutes. You can do it for five minutes. And, and I realize uh, that's kind of repetitious, but, but as you are praying this on earth, as it is in heaven, you, you can start thinking about what does that mean in God? It, it, what's the difference from when God is in charge and when people are in charge? And you, 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 you start praying about that. Um, here's another one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Here's one. Be still and know that you are God. Be still and know that you are God. These are, these are breath prayers. And, and, and one of, one of the, the real ways of using a breath prayer is to get you centered and focus so that you are now ready to be in the presence of God. Because sometimes, you know, we're so wound up and, and, and we're maybe stressed or whatever, um, that if, if we don't take, you know, just a few minutes to kind of get centered and get focused and to get to sort of put some of the, the ways of, the, of our life and our world behind us for a minute so that we can be very present with God, breath prayer can help you with that. I've shared with you Akathist prayer before, A-K-A-T-H-I-S-T. Again, you can look it up on YouTube. There's lots on there. Some of them, some of them I wouldn't like. You probably won't like either. But others, uh, they're they're very good. Find one that you like. I the, the ones I like tend to be about twenty minutes long, somewhere around there. Um, I will tell you this: you're supposed to stand while you do this prayer. The word akathis means not sitting. So you, but you can. I've done this many times with groups. Uh, uh, Dif different groups around. Um, and you, you, it's a very beautiful prayer that if you can do it outside, maybe you can have it on your phone or something where you can, you can hear this prayer, but, but you're out in the nature of God because a lot of Akathis prayers talk a lot about the beauty of creation. Uh, uh, an another prayer that, that I use is the prayer of examine. And uh, I have an app on my phone I have an app on my phone that is called Reimagining the Examine, and you can you can download that. Um, uh, it's free, and you can you can use it as I use it in the evening sometimes, where I will do a prayer of examine, and a prayer of examine is where you kind of go through your day. Um, and, and thinking about different things and, and the app will kind of give you different suggestions of, of sort of how to examine your day today. But it is, it is a way of connecting with God. I'm, I'm trying to give you prayers that are, are not just the same old thing you always do where um, you maybe got a list of people. And so you say all these names and I, I, I know that that is necessary and we do say people's names in prayer, but uh, sometimes we need more than that. And I'm just, I'm just trying to give you suggestions. Uh, I really believe that when, when Jesus would spend an hour or, or get up early in the morning to go pray to God, I, I just find it hard to believe that it was just some chore he was doing. I think he learned different ways of doing it um, and enjoyed it. I want to talk about something else, um, and that is just spending time with God, particularly outside, carving out a particular amount of time. Uh, it can be an hour. It can be two hours. Um, I have done a 48-hour uh, retreat of silence and solitude. I did it by myself. Um, it's not hard to not talk when you're by yourself. So for 48 hours, I was by myself and uh, I, I didn't, I didn't talk, but I, that was meant to be 48 hours of spending time with God. I, I, a, a kind of a more reasonable, easier thing to do is just to take an hour and I will go down to the Appalachian trail. You can go down to the Appalachian trail up there by, um, 
the where the trail to humpback rocks is there's a little parking lot up there uh you can follow the signs and get on the appalachian trail and and find a big rock there's plenty and just go sit on that rock and spend an hour with god i mean the one thing i i try to do is is i i, I don't i don't want to be on my phone um but, but let me say something about everything that I am saying here. Be careful that you don't put so many rules on this that you can't enjoy it. This is going back to, is God fun? No, God's not fun, but you should spend time with him. It's going to be, it's going to be boring, but you should do it anyway. Why does it have to be boring? You know, do you know that sometimes when, when I am preparing this, so like, I'm going to go up to Humpback Rock, the, the parking lot there, and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, walk down. Sometimes I actually do go up to Humpback Rocks, but sometimes I go to the Appalachian Trail and I just sit there. But you know what? On the way there, you know what I do? Hey, how about we get a cup of coffee? Can we stop by Starbucks? Okay. I think this is important because what does God say? Is God, he, he's like, no, you, you're not allowed to have coffee. You're, you're supposed to be focused on me. Who says? I, I believe that God says, yes, yes, let's stop by Starbucks. Let's get a coffee. Why not? Um, I think you'll enjoy a cup of coffee. I, I want you to enjoy this. Don't have so many rules that you can't enjoy it. Um, Jackie Halstead has written a, a new book called Leaning Into God's Embrace. Jackie, uh, Actually, I, I know her family in Canada uh, have kind of grown up around her family. And uh, she was at Abilene, then she was at Lipscomb for a while. Um, but she runs the this, this SELA Institute, the SELA Center for Spiritual Formation, where I did my spiritual direction training under her. But she writes here kind of about spending time really in silence with God. OK, and I know this doesn't appeal to everybody, but it will appeal to some. And she says that in the silence, I felt the layers stripped away. I was no longer able to distract myself from the voice of God. And God gently taught me how to listen. That sounds good. Let me, let me continue. Gradually, a rhythm developed. And when I settled in at the retreat center, I would begin to release the things that I was carrying, worries, anxiety, my list, and I would finally arrive. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you love to do that? Does that sound boring and horrible? It, it doesn't to me. As I let go of these distractions, my struggles, sins, and pain rose to the surface where God and I could address them together. This experience was never harsh although I met it with trepidation. If I seemed a sensed a challenge from God, it was a gentle chiding followed by a release as I would again recognize God's unending love for me. Through this and beyond, I would lean into God's embrace and drink in the love. That, that, that doesn't sound bad. That sounds good. Women, I think maybe will relate to this. I wept profusely for the first few retreats, but it's not just women. My tears flowed unchecked for the entire weekend. It was not unpleasant, just unusual for me. I wasn't sure what to make of it. I later learned that this was the gift of tears, a cleansing. That's good. I tell you, men could use this. Men might be embarrassed by it, but it is that cleansing. In addition, I realized that being in silence and solitude was more than sitting still with my hands folded. In contrast, I spent most of my time outside walking, sitting, journaling, and sketching. My experience of prayer expanded. And most importantly, I learned how to listen in prayer. I, I think the way that Jackie is describing that, I think that sounds inviting I, I, I would hope that you would sit there and listen to that and think, I would like to experience something like that. This is, this is what I'm trying to give you, all of us. I'm trying to make this accessible to you. That you shouldn't feel like, no, that's for monks and nuns and, and, you know, kind of professionals. No, no, it's for everybody. 
two more things. One of them is scripture reading. Um, this is probably my easiest habit. Um, I, I read through the Bible. I'm reading through the Bible. Um, it's been a lot of years in a row. Um, I am right now about to finish the book of Acts. So uh, I, if you want to read the entire Bible in a year, you need to read three and a quarter chapters a day. That's not that many. The way I usually do it is when I go through the Old Testament, I read five chapters a day so that when I get to the New Testament, I can slow down. I'm now reading two chapters a day, and I think I won't have any trouble getting finished this year, just reading two chapters a day. Um, it's not that I'm trying to read less. It's trying, I'm sort of trying not to hurry so much, if you could put that that way. If you decided, okay, I want to read the New Testament in a year, which both of these I think are good goals, you need one chapter a day. And actually, if you read one chapter a day, you will finish on September the 17th. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to turn this into math, but I'm just saying it's not that big of a commitment for you for you to do that. You, you all, I think, surely know how I feel about Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina is a fancy word, but the way I practice Lectio Divina is, you know, I read scripture like, my favorite passage to use for Lectio Divina is Psalm 46. Um, I love using that psalm. It's, it's the psalm I've used by far the most whenever I've done Lectio Divina. But you, can, you, you set yourself a time period. Let's, you could do two minutes. You could do five minutes. You're going to do it in five minutes blocks. So for five minutes, I'm going to read Psalm 46. And I just keep reading through. Um, after that five minutes, then I, I have found a thought or a word or a sentence out of Psalm 46 that I'm going to meditate on for five minutes. So in the second five minutes, now I'm meditating about that. And then I, after that five minutes, the next five minutes, I'm praying about what I meditated about. So I, I was I focused my thoughts on that. Now I'm talking to God about it. Uh, what are the implications of this? And I talked to God about that. There is also a time, if you want the, the last five minutes, where you really sit in silence before God and you are just sitting in his presence for five minutes. That's Lectio Divina. I don't know what grabs you. Um, maybe a combination of this. The, the, the last thing that, that I would say here about spiritual disciplines is honestly the spiritual discipline of music. And I find, and you know this about me, that music has a way of moving my heart and, and getting me more into a, a frame of mind. Uh, you know, some of the songs, you know, uh, Jeannie Heron sent me one time the song Hymn of Heaven by Phil Wickham. I think Patty likes this song, too. And, and so I list others of you have sent me songs, too. I I lately turned to the song Deep, Deep Love of Jesus by Fernando Ortega. It's just it just really um, if you want one that is a cappella, Zoe Group has a song still uh, that is, is a beautiful song. Uh, the song, Oh Dear, I mean, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. It's, it's, it's an old song. It, it's, uh, it's in our hymn book. But listen to this. Oh, Sabbath rest by Galilee, O oh, calm of hills above, where Jesus knelt to share with thee the silence of, of eternity interpreted by love. Maybe you, you should know that song. Uh, I, I have a feeling you probably do. Um, but that, he, they're, they're talking about some of the things that I talked to you about, about Jesus praying, where Jesus knelt to share with thee the silence of eternity interpreted by love. 
That's what Jesus did. You know, so, so here I've tried to give you a variety of possibilities. And I do this because we are not all the same. We don't all relate to God in the same way. Find something that works for you and create a habit. I'm going back to the example of Jesus Christ. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Let's bow. Father, you are good. You're, you're lovely. You're beautiful. You are attractive. And Father, the more we spend with you and the closer we in, interact with you, the more we realize, good grief, you are, you are really good. You're, you're better than we thought. Your love is deeper than we ever imagined. And so I pray for everybody that's listening to this today, that they will grab something out of this that would create a new habit in their life and that they would get to spend time with you. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I think all of you are familiar with the story in 1 Samuel chapter 17. You know, Saul and the Israelites have been fighting against the Philistines for many, many years. And for 40 days, the Israelites had been taunted by this real tall guy over nine foot tall. He was named Goliath. 
And the Israelites were definitely afraid of him, but they didn't know what to do. And Saul said, you know, what? basically, in essence, who can fight against him? But you know, a little shepherd boy by the name of David, who was the youngest son of Jesse, he stepped right up. He didn't hesitate. And basically, in essence, he said, I'll do it. And you know the rest of the story, how David killed Goliath, and then the Israelites routed the Philistines. Well, in a similar way, God sent his son Jesus on earth to do the same thing. Jesus knew when he was a little boy what he was here to do. He was here to give his life for you and for me. You know, God had given the Israelites and many people throughout all the ages plenty of options for forgiveness and to turn away from worshiping idols and the bad things that they were doing. But yet, man continued to do that. So God sent his son Jesus, and he didn't hesitate to give his life on the cross for each and every one of us so that we would have the hope of eternal life. We're here today to partake of these emblems that represents his body and his blood that was shed on the cross for you and for me. I'll just say one prayer for both the bread and the fruit of the vine. Our Father in heaven, we're just so thankful for everything that you've done for us. Father, we're so thankful that you, I know how hard it must have been, but for you to send your son to this earth to live and to die on the cross and to shed his blood for each and every one of us. Father, we pray that you'll be with us now as we partake of this bread and we take of this fruit of the vine that represents his body and his blood. May we all do so in a manner pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Also, we'd like to give you the opportunity to contribute to our church. Uh, the information is on the screen. You can send a check uh, to our treasurer, Jim Nay, and that will help continue the work of the church here in Waynesboro and help us to support the missionaries that we support worldwide. Thank you for watching our service here today. Good morning, church family, once more. At the, as we come to the end, close of another worship service, our hope and our prayers is that you've been encouraged. We know, without a doubt, the Bible tells us in Matthew that where two or more come together, he is amongst them. So folks, he's been with us this morning. And we pray that you will take what you've learned this morning, what you've heard, and apply it to your lives. Take it out into the world with you. Take it to your friends, your neighbors, to all of those that, that you associate with. There's none of us, none of us that don't need it. So we pray that you'll be, you have been encouraged from what you've heard today and that you will apply this to your lives and take it to your friends and neighbors and help them to be a part of it because you can give them this sight. They can be a part of this too. So be with each one of us. That's the reason we do it is because there's still people out there that need it. So if you need it, if you've got friends that need it, invite them in to watch it with you or tell them how to get on to it so that they can have it every Sunday morning. Be at church with us. Because now, if you will, if you bow with me, we'll close, I'll close us in prayer. Our dear and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for another wonderful day and for another very inspirational service. So, Lord, we pray that you'll be with us and take us away from here. As we go, help us to be safe. And please, Lord, forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. Help us, Lord, to always be there for each other and to put you first in our lives. I pray that you'll go with us now, Lord, as we leave as we leave the service this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits
Praise to 